Welcome to Waiting on the Trade, a comics book club for people who can't keep up with monthly comics. I'm Matt Litcher. I'm Patrick Fitzgerald Fleck. <laughs> and I'm Tyler Murphy. Wait, is that actually the intro? That's impressive. We're doing it! <laughs> we already started talking about the comic, and now we're recording. This month, we are talking about Rogue and Gambit, Ring of Fire, an explosive rom-com from Kelly Thompson, Pear Perez, Frank D. Armada, and Joe Caramagna. We're going so fast through the intro listener because we already discuss- started discussing the comic and we don't want to lose good podcast content so good. <laughs> just gonna race through this god knows we're gonna need it <laughs> <laughs> Now, in case you need a refresher ring of fire pits rogan gambit against not only new x villain lavish who my wife described as gimp woman today <laughs> but also their own relationship baggage however the couple that this book claims is everyone's favorite ex couple comes out the other side with a new appreciation for each other and a new lease on life for the relationship it's wholesome and wonderful and we all really liked it right hey listen hmm. i have not been a guest host for a while this is true. And I mean, we keep doing this where it's like, oh yeah, you haven't been a guest host for a year, but it's because we like took a break and added three extra guest hosts. Oh well, yeah, middle. yeah. So no one's been a host for a while, Tyler. But but because of that, uh, I, I haven't been doing a good job keeping up with the comic game. I'm going to be honest with you. And when you asked me, two things came to mind. One, what the hell are we going to read? And two. <laughs> When is this going to be recorded? And when uh, I knew it would be like released for February, I was like, oh my gosh. What if we did a stupid couple thing? Gotta get those Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's, I was like, yeah, hey. we're, we're, doing, we're doing a Valentine's episode. And out of all the people in the world, let mm. alone in this friend group and podcast host people, I am the last person who should probably be doing anything that has to do with Val- Valentine's. Valentine's Day. <laughs> This was just like in October when I ordained a wedding. I was ordained, or I was a, an officiant for a wedding. Mm-hmm. I have no business being up there talking about uh, uh, being in love for a long time. They keep and asking got, me too, as well. I don't, yeah. I don't know what they're doing. What is that? What they're doing? <laughs> Why? Why us? No. Uh, uh, <laughs> because you don't have anything better to do. See? Uh, uh, yeah. Stop right. Picking like my Saturdays are guys. <laughs> My Jesus. Saturdays are free. What am I gonna do? Play Pokemon? Come on. Been down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my literal thought process in picking this comic was, uh, I go I went on the Amazon Kindle thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I just typed in heroes that I have action figures for. Nice. <laughs> I looked. I looked around my my rooms of collectible stuff, and I went. Oh, I got this cool Mezco Gambit figure here. I wonder if there's any good Gambit comics out. And... I mean, there aren't any comic that has Gambit in his bed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's my take, personally. Hot take number one. <laughs> and uh, this one popped up, and I went, all right, yeah, it's going to be in February. Why not? It'd be like a couple things. But boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, it, was a, it was a comic. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, let's so start know. with your question, Tyler. Yeah, <laughs> my question was, was pretty simple. Yeah, was what, like... what the hell did I get us into? <laughs> that that's pretty much it. What the hell did I get us into, and what what happened? That was so we, that, so we had a question. text message chain going before we started this recording. We we're like sharing our questions with each other. Like, okay, like, what do you guys want to talk about for this? And Tyler, you got the ball rolling by Sunday, basically like, I think my question is, what the hell was that? Yep, yep, that is, I, I actually have the text now. The text is, <laughs> is my question being, what have I done to over the top, or is it a little less absurd than, what the hell was that? That was the, that's what started this nonsense. Which I don't remember my exact response, but I think I went with, we can work with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But like, Pat also chimed in later and was like, yeah, that's basically how I feel about it. And also, like I said, I was reading it over like my wife's shoulder today because I was going to reread it. She took it away from me and was like, let me look at this weird X-Men comic. And she also had this same like experience. And I just read this book and I thought it was fine. Like, really? It's fine. Matt, yeah, really? It's like, 
I, I'm not going to tell you it's good. I'm not going to tell you it's bad, though. I think it's fine. I mean, it's whatever. It reads like an official fanfic. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's that's like what something comics you are would... these days. No, but like, this reads exactly like something you would read on one of those fanfic sites. Just like someone's like, Rogue and Gambit. They go to relationship counseling and they get to fight. But at the same time they're fighting, they go over the re- biggest, highest, and lowest points of their relationship. This this is a what? hallmark. It sounds like this... a normal ass X Men comic to me, fan. <laughs> and yeah, this is a hallmark movie sequel with fighting and superpowers. That's what this is, and maybe a little bit more risque stuff. I don't watch hallmark movies, but you know this this was I thought the same thing, Pat. I honestly, as I was going through it, I was like, this was someone wrote fan fiction and then hired an artist. Yeah, that's what this was. <laughs> that's how it reads. Every Marvel comic has been since Stan Lee stopped writing Marvel comics, you guys. Stop. <laughs> <Stop. Bad pictures. laughs> it's not true. Just How officially licensed. But even like when they Matt, do... Are, like, you, are you really comparing the quality of this to other X-Men comics that we've done for this show? Come on. Okay, now I have to think about what other X-Men comics we've done for this show. <laughs> you had like a two-parter on X-Men comics that had to do with like racial divide once, and you're going to be like, yeah, this one's okay. No, no, no. Compared I'm not saying this is <laughs> anywhere near as good as that one. That's not my argument. My argument is this is what this is not offensively bad to me. It is not good. We can talk about the many issues with it, some of which which we were talking about off mic and need to get back to. Yeah. One of the things that's in my head right now is like the fact that the art is very over sexualized and like it's not all rogue, but it's mostly rogue. It's mostly right? rogue, yeah. Like mostly rogue. Gambit's shown his shirt, you get like one butt shot of Gambit when he's swimming, but like most of the butt shots are rogue butt shots, right? But like it's also supposed to be fun, sexy romp, punch em up relationship issues thing. So, like, I don't have a big issue with the like the over sexualizing, even though it's definitely noticeable. And like, does Lavish need to be wearing heels? Probably not. Like latex boots on top of a latex bodysuit. Like, what are you doing, X Men? Although, again, par for the course with X Men stuff. They're always weirdly kinky and sexual. <laughs> and they actually make a joke about it with the uh, like early on where Gambit hands her. His coat when they first meet or whatever. And yeah, goes, that was you actually can't just wear spandex. Like one of my I, I favorite panels cool. is like the stuff where they're just like riffing on that nine, like that very nineties comics thing where Rogue's costume just like happens to be torn yeah, into yeah. the sheerest mini skirt and a boob covering. <laughs> yeah, it was like perfectly cut, and and that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm gonna agree with Matt in the sense that is this a good comic? No, hell no. Uh, <laughs> is it the worst thing in the world? No, because it feels like they are in on the joke at times. Like, there's definitely points in this comic when you read it where they're like, yep, I think we've done something ridiculous here. Let's also make fun of it. Like, there are definitely moments, and that was that was one of the main ones that I thought where it was like, all right, they're 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 not going to take themselves too seriously as this goes on. Um, and also calling out the villain with all the the latex and saying, you know, we know this gal who really likes the color white. What if you, uh, have you talked to her about, <laughs> you know, the white queen or whatever? Um, I thought that was, that was pretty good too. So there are moments of levity that kind of make it worthwhile, but i uh, gosh, in the grand scheme of things, no. All right. So should we go over, <laughs> should we go over point by point the issues with the book? I guess, I mean, Tyler, it's your question. I guess you should probably elaborate first. <laughs> <laughs> well, so like I guess it it all the the idea the premise of it starts off fine, right? Like oh, Rogan Gambit. The premise is hilarious We're... to me. Like it's, I know you guys are yeah. like it's such a fan fictiony premise, but like I love the premise. Like we have to go undercover and pose as a couple that has relationship issues, but also we are a couple that has relationship right. issues. Right. And like, again, that's, I think part of the levity of it. Like they, why don't you and Colossus go like stuff like that, where like, there's actual, like they're making fun of the story itself. But once it gets established, like by the end of the first issue or first chapter, if you will, it just goes along at a breakneck pace. That makes no sense. Yeah. Like there's, flashbacks that come out of nowhere they do a breaking and entering scene and then the next comic it's like they forgot about it completely but 
I do think that does not do the story any favors. Like, I was yeah. not really confused by that, but I can tell you that other people in this household were definitely confused by that, where it's like one chapter ends, they've done something that's like, oh, God, what's going to happen now? And then and they're just in therapy again the next issue. Like, I yeah, understood you... what was going on, but I do, like, I do get how that could throw someone if they weren't, like, if they didn't quite get the... Rogue and Gambit had basically forgotten what they did the previous issue. Yeah, it's like so the last page of like issue two, right? Or just before that, they find all the clones or the golems or whatever they're fucking called yeah. as they're being built, right? And they go, Oh man. And then the you know, Spandex lady, uh, she goes, I can't think of her name now, but um Lavish. they're like Lavish. Lavish, that's it. See, you know it's not good when you're like the main villain. Who the hell is she? It doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't matter. The main villain was the, uh, you know, Rogue and Gambit story. Whatever. Shut up. Um, <laughs> uh, they so they find it, and they're like, "Oh man, that's bad." And then it ends, and they're like, "Oh man, let's talk about Socrates and let's show off Rogue's assets again." Like that. It, that doesn't make any sense. Like, that should have built off of, like, what happened in between that? Like, the they're, you're telling me Lavish and, you know, Lavish Minnie, who dresses normal. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, less, lavish and less lavish, yeah. Yes. They're just going to let him go? Like, there's no, there's got to be some bridge of the gap there, and it, it never happens. And it happens more than once in this, in this and that's that's really annoying to me. So lavish and modest. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, we will canonically use those names now. Yeah. <laughs> lavish and modest. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I, it it doesn't. And then they're all happy, and it's all. And I get that's part of the problem with the the story is like that's what they're fighting, but they just don't do a good job explaining that this happened to the other mutants that have been sent there. You know, all you see is the three of them presumably die at the start, but they don't. Uh, well, what was Lavish's and, like? Like, what did they? What was the end game of what they were doing on this island? I didn't quite. Did they ever explain that? No one knows, Pat. That's the problem. <laughs> That's where the "what the hell happened" uh, question comes into play. Because yeah, it doesn't explain what her end game was or what her plan was. Making an army of mutant memory golems. That she can steal powers from. I guess. I mean, that's, this, what, I, that's what I've got. <laughs> what I think got. for me, one of the biggest sins that it committed was that the big bad lavish, like the dominatrix lavish that is doing all this, turns out to be a golem in the end. It's not even the real lavish. Like, right. What are we doing? I thought that was kind of funny, actually. No. <laughs> No, because then like, they assume that people want to read this again, and that's a terrible idea. <laughs> like, oh, there was we've made zero story. point for any of this. It's like at least have a villain, like actually. Ugh. Rogue and Gambit are back together now, Pat. That's the point. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of there with you, honestly. I'm just playing devil's advocate a little bit. <laughs> I was gonna say Rogue and Gambit were back together by issue three. The rest of it was. Was nonsense. Well, now even with all their baggage reabsorbed, they're back together, Tyler. It's completely different. <laughs> Watch me just be <laughs> insufferable for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> You're uh... getting there. No, just... <laughs> I yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, the I guess the the like I said, the true villain was was their baggage, I guess, but the, it was told in a really dumb way. Really How did you guys feel about? Like, not the flashbacks as, like, a story structure thing, because I think we've hit on that a little bit at least, but as far as, like, do you think the story had enough information about what was going on with Rogue and Gambit previously that you gave a shit about them getting back together by the end, or no? Because I'm curious about that, because, like, I think I probably know more of those, like... Er if not, like, know more of them, I've read about them <laughs> in, like, weird X-Men stuff. So, like, the Antarctica bit, I remember being a big deal back in, like, I think that was early 2000. It must be, it must be late 90s. Anyways, but, like, 
It's this whole big thing where like Gambit was part of Mr. Sinister's like marauders and like sold out the Morlocks and was responsible for a bunch of people dying and like the X-Men getting fucked up essentially. And then that all came out when they were in Antarctica. And so anyways, like I know stuff like that and I know that you guys do not know some of that stuff. So I'm curious if you like, do you give a shit about Rogue and Gambit as a couple by the end of this and do the flashbacks help with that? I think I cared about them less at the end of this. That's what I thought you might say. <laughs> I enjoy Rogue and Gambit. I like their interactions. But yeah, I was so done with this. <laughs> like I didn't care. I did I don't know like most of these references. Uh, the more we read these X-Men comics that are like focused towards specific fans for specific niches in the X-Men like mythos, the more I find out that I I'm a poser. <laughs> I and you're a poser. Like I'm a again, shallow X Men fan. I like, like the movies. I like maybe a handful of comics, and that is as deep as as I've much ever as I'm gone. devil's advocating for this comic so that we can have a good discussion about it. Like, I don't think this is for anyone that's not like a like dedicated Rogue or Gambit fan, and like. I don't like Gambit, actually. I think a comic that has, like, this much Gambit in it shouldn't exist. <laughs> so. Well, and and for me, I had never... Uh, I only read one X-Men comic prior to this, and it was a long time ago. It was X-Men versus Fantastic Four, way back in the 90s. Sure. Um, okay. And that was... It was like a four or five comic miniseries that I don't think actually amounted to anything if I remember correctly. I'll have to look it up, put it in the show notes, I don't remember. But uh, as far as it, I, yeah. as far as I know, it wasn't um anything that that was like game changing. I remember these two mostly from the cartoon of the night. Yeah, I was going to say that's um, mainly where I come from. Yeah, and honestly, like Marvel versus Capcom, right? Gambit was on every team that I ever played <laughs> like in a fighting game. So that like, that's I remember him from the cartoons and stuff. So any of this comic stuff that they talk about, I don't know anything about it. I knew nothing about it. The flashbacks weren't done especially well to make me give a shit about the backstory. It really didn't. Like it was yeah. like that eh, yeah, okay, cool, but the whole time you're like this is one of those they're meant to be together stories whether you like it or not. Like, and they they kind of force feed you that from the start of it, and I don't know. It just uh, at I'm I'm with Pat. Like at the end, I thought I was a fan of Rogue and Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I am anymore. <laughs> um, and uh, it's again like separate. They have cool powers. The ideas of the characters are neat. Um. Obviously, Gambit's popular because he throws cards and is more unique as an X-Man character versus everybody else. And Rogue is just badass who can do anything. Yeah, um, I actually really like Rogue. Rogue's probably like yeah. on my short list of favorite X-Men, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I think they both bring something very unique, but it's weird that when you put them together, and maybe it's the story. Maybe it really is just this particular story. Yeah. It doesn't show what they could be as a team, duo, couple crime fighting mystery solving uh uh team maybe that's it like maybe this was just a poor way of showing it i mean they're literally just fighting each other for most of it right which like doesn't give them a ton of well right actually interesting stuff to do like there's just there are so many pages where it's just a mess of rogues and gambits and it's like Okay, cool. This is cool, I guess. That's all right. But, like, they could do something new. <laughs> like, they could do something else. I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that was it. She So, apparently, this lavish chick has been recruiting tons and tons of mutants to this island, according to Kitty. Pride, yeah, but they only with... fight rogues and gambits, except the yeah. first issue. No, the second issue? The, the second, second issue, issue yeah. And, the and, then it's amp, like, yeah. and then it's like, oh, no, these were just the two coolest ones. So, we're going to make a ton of golems of these two. It was like, yeah. They, like, if you can make a ton of golems of one mutant, don't you just need one 
decently powerful mutant, and then you're just golden. So they're taking like, like the golems are all like drawn from specific memories, right? Like yeah. that's why they're all dressed differently. So like you run out eventually. <laughs> I think is the is the thing. Well, then wouldn't a mutant that has like a good amount of power and longevity like get Mystique in there, and you'll be I fucking mean Wolverine, good. right? Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> Well, and Rogue isn't a bad one either, right? Like, if you're going to yeah. get one, Rogue's a pretty good choice. You know, the one who can have any mutant power. All right, so this <laughs> is, like, this is me riding the Marvel bullshit train all the way down. So if you make a golem of Rogue, and you use that golem to absorb someone else's memories and powers, can you make a golem from a golem? <laughs> can you, like, double VHS recording that sucker? <laughs> Uh, for those who don't know in our younger audience, a VHS. Oh, right, right, right. A, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I forgot I'm old now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, maybe? I don't, I don't know. Oh, no, no, okay. they didn't the real they didn't lavish turns this. up in yeah. Rogue and Gambit 2 electric. Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Does she show up again? <laughs> are you just joking? No, I don't I think she showed up again as far as I know. <laughs> there is a sequel to this series, which we'll talk about when we get uh, that far. <laughs> we might even be there already, but... Yeah. Okay, I wanted to so, see if you guys had anything else to say on this question first. Well, okay, so you say, Matt, you say you, you knew the references, the flashbacks. Not like, all, but most, yeah. Like, okay. I'm, like, I at least recognize when they took place and, like, what they're referring to for the most part. And I'm guessing it's just, like, little asides that obviously weren't in those original comics. It's just, like... What were Rogue and Gambit doing while the action was off screen? That kind yeah, of I'm not sure entirely if that's exactly. Or is it like, like if some of those pages scenes. are picked up? I'm not yeah. entirely sure, to be honest with you. I know, okay. like, I would assume their first meeting one is that got to be like at least a little bit of a rehash, because like if that didn't happen on page, that's kind of wild. But <laughs> yeah, but like the one that's at Scott and Jean's wedding, I don't know whether that actually showed up in the book or not. Okay. Maybe, like, there was a funny panel of them going off. And then they just explained. Like, I would assume the bit where Gambit caught the garter happened, but I don't know sure, if, like, the rest, like of, a, I don't know if the yeah, rest of that scene been... is in the book. <laughs> Gotta give credit where credit is due, though. The, when they do the flashback panels, I do like the change in art style. It's really uh, cool, I, right? I liked that. I liked how they uh, really kind of brought the, the flashbacks to, to life. I mean... That that part I, I give him credit, and and really the whole book the art's not the worst. There's worst art books out there. Uh, it's so busy, do, it, but it's busy. <laughs> it's a There's little a bit lot busy, going yeah. on. There's a lot going on. Um, and the one other cool thing that they did while they were fighting all the rogues and gambits was that they switched powers for a little bit. Doesn't yeah, explain I like that. How, uh, that doesn't explain how they ended up switching back at the end, but like that that little bit. Yeah, that I was like, a little bit like wonky on of how Rogue ended up being able to give everyone's powers back at the end, because I don't know that Lavish had the ability to give powers back, but you know. And I'm pretty sure Rogue doesn't have the ability to give No, I think you back. just, like, usually naturally get your powers back over time, unless she's just, like, touched you for far too long, like she did with Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so. one of the dozens of mutant powers she absorbed is obviously the to give powers back, back? sure, sure. Yeah. No, that That's actually, like, the rest of the story Uno reverse made, card. Yeah. made yes. sense to me if it wasn't, like, the best. But, like, that bit of the story, I was like, I don't understand this. I don't understand how Rogue's giving these powers back. Which, like, okay. the format of this, it just it feels like those cheap episodes towards the middle of the seasons of a show where they're like, okay, we need to fill this spot. Uh, it's a clip show. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, okay, we're going to have a really flimsy premise that allows us to do a bunch of flashbacks to other better episodes. This, is the, wedding, this is the wedding episodes yeah. in most, you know, season four of yeah. the show. Yeah. And that's what this comic is. Like, the actual, like, the thing, the, the story that they're hanging everything else on isn't good enough. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, that story is, like, again, it's fine. You could probably even say it's bad. It's not good. It's it's fine. Like, the villain is whatever. And I think for this to have worked, they needed they needed a better villain to fight, for sure. Like, like I would I would prefer yeah. them, like, Rogue and Gambit, to physically go back in time, like, cross their own timelines, Doctor Who style, and, like, have to chase bad guys through their memories of their relations. I don't know how that would work, but you could do it. But that has more, like... Ramific like actual 
the fact that it's just memories. Who no, I mean, this is like <laughs> this is one of the things that DC and Marvel comics do. Maybe even more so now because a lot of the people reading them are just the people who have been reading them for forever. So like, you can get away with this more. But like, it's just a story about past stories. <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah. A, it's not like it's not really a new story. It kind of is. It pushes them forward a little bit, right? Like. They were broken up. Now they're back together. But, like, but there aren't stakes because we don't know what probably, Lavish is doing. I'm say, you that, probably don't care about this story unless you already care about Rogan Gambit. Like, even if you care about Rogan Gambit, sure. Are they or aren't they going to get back together? Yes, sure. I guess I care about that. But they didn't seem like they were like hating each other at the very beginning of this. Yeah. Like, and, I don't and, think they and, needed all that much to get back together. But like, no. I mean, clearly they didn't. Cause they really yeah. are What's the stakes? <laughs> Like, yeah, what's was, the, like, world was... ended? Like, is mutant kind going to fall apart because Lavish has this island of, like, clones? Who cares? Like, why yeah. do I care? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, was, it was the lowest stakes you could have written a comic around. Uh, will they, won't they get back together? Com- like, that's the best you can come up with when you have two of the most iconic X-Men? Because whether you like Gambit or not, or like Rogue, no, is, like, everybody is knows a quote them. unquote popular X Men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do like a Days of Future Past, but it's Rogue and Gambit, and they're doing this like their own. Like they come I back need... from the future, and it's old them, and they're like, you have to get back together, otherwise the world is doomed. <laughs> or like, or like a villain went back and made sure that they did get together, and they're like we're in a really strong relationship, and the rest of the world is fucking falling apart because that's just fucking wrong <laughs> or something, you know, just like. Ugh. Anything other than let's send them to a really nice resort. And okay, see, I like send them to a really nice resort. That's funny, but you have to like you have to you have to get commit somewhere to the else funny though, though. Yeah, like commit yeah. to like being a parody and like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Isn't this ridiculous? The fact that they sort of tried to make it into a series, like yeah, it's, no. <laughs> and <laughs> and two, like you said, this is kind of written for people who've read it for a while, so they can kind of get away with it. Some of this stuff. Like for me, going into it, if this was my only introduction to Rogan Gambit, I'm no longer interested in reading more Rogan Gambit. Yeah. Like, because it doesn't do a good job, like, fleshing out their characters separately. It's like you, you think they're a duo no matter what. And that's not necessarily the case. Like, they have, I'm guessing, cooler stories where they could be off solo or whatever. But it's, 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 it just doesn't do a good job of being like, Here's why you need to care about these two being a couple. Like, I don't give a shit. Good for them. <laughs> like if if I were a Rogue Gambit fanatic and like I followed everything, I know all the references they're making. I would love the fact that they did. Like they're obviously really loyal to like all the character designs throughout the history of Rogue and Gambit. Because that's like the major thing is like look at all these Rogue and Gambits with their like unique yeah, it's costumes like distinctly and... one of the selling points of the series, right? Is like, oh, I remember oh, that scene where she everyone. wore that. Oh, look, yeah. she's getting punched in the face while she's wearing flip flops and like short shorts. Like, if I <laughs> recognized where that was from and what was it referencing, I would enjoy it. I don't have that <laughs> reference, so it's completely just yeah, yeah. it's yeah, so much that I don't agree. understand. <laughs> and the thing that I'm supposed to get, the thing that I've been here for from the beginning, is the a plot. And it's not good. <laughs> no. So, for like the dozen or so Rogue Gambit fans that know all these things, I'm sure this is like amazing for them. But everyone else, I can't imagine. Yeah. The dozen or so fans were listed off hastily at the start of this. That's the writers, the artists, <laughs> and the editors, I'm sure. But That's uh, not yeah. true. I'm sure there are people who read this and enjoyed it. Like I said, those are the same people that uh, probably read, um, you know, shitty fanfic. It's yeah, it really Mar- does. Marvel Comics. <laughs> yeah, and, and Marvel <laughs> Comics. So. One and the same. Says the guy who only reads Marvel comics. So are you guys? You guys aren't going to read the follow-up sequel, Mister and Mrs. X, that takes place after they get married. That's a thing. Yeah, because <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you when when we were talking uh, in our text chat there, you were like, "Don't forget, we got to come up with recommendations and stuff." I said, "I'm going to bow out this time." <laughs> like I have one, but I don't think I have the right. To uh, <laughs> to to suggest another trade 
paperback based off of if you, if you like, like this. this. If you well, like this, <laughs> if you, you like are not this, the same person. <laughs> if you like this, there is a sequel. So part of the reason I think so one of the things that did kind of throw me reading it is the last page is so fucking weird, right? The last page is bonkers. You flip the like Gambit's like, Rogue, I got something important to ask you. And she's like, Yeah. And he's like, How you feel about cats? And that's the last page. It's like, what? I don't understand. That's not like that's nothing. Like this is, that's a nothing page for the last page of your book. And I think part of it is at this point in time, the Xbooks were considering having Kitty Pride and Colossus get married. And they decided not to do that. And instead, Rogue and Gambit got married. And I think maybe they were going to set that up, but they weren't sure whether they wanted to set that up. So, like, the, this miniseries gets, like, not, doesn't, doesn't quite get to do what it thought maybe it was going to do. I don't know. This is my theory, by the way. This is all headcanon. So, Rogue and Gambit do get married in that issue of X Men Gold. Let's say it's X Men Gold number 30. That sounds right. Anyways, Who's and this is, <laughs> this is. Actually, sub digression, the same season where Batman and Catwoman didn't get married, like it was the same summer that where both companies had weddings that didn't happen. Hilarious. They, planned, um, they had to have planned it, right? I don't know. Sometimes stuff just happens, man. Sometimes they resurrect dead sidekicks at the some ti- same time. Like sometimes people don't get married at the same time. It's just like weird synchronicity stuff. Um but at least in the X-Men book, Rogue and Gambit do get married. And so they come out of this, and there's a follow-up series to this miniseries called Mr. and Mrs. X, in which the newly married couple of Gambit and Rogue go do things. And if you liked this, A, I don't know that you're still listening to us because we're just ragging <laughs> on this Yeah, one. <laughs> wait, 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 B, read that. It's probably up your alley, too. <laughs> We can't do recommendations yet. We haven't even got to your yeah, guys' question. What the heck? Slow down, Matt. God I mean, because I don't think any of us is going to recommend that series at the end of this. Yeah, so right. we may as well talk about it now so people know it exists. There is also, because I just bought some of the more recent X-Men stuff, and Rogue's in that, and so Gambit shows up because they're married. Like, Gambit just hangs around the tr- this treehouse that they have as a base and, like, plays poker with people. Because he's such a shithead, you guys. <laughs> I hate Gambit. Um, yep. So there's an issue where Rogue's going to get information from like an intergalactic bar. And she takes Gambit with, because of course she does. He's a shithead. It's where he belongs in an intergalactic bar. Yeah. And Destiny shows up. And Destiny's basically like one of Rogue's moms, who has been recently resurrected from being dead. The X-Men's so fucking weird, you guys. But basically the whole time, Destiny's just like, God, I wish my daughter hadn't married you to Gambit. <laughs> like, that's, that's the entire thing of what Destiny's doing in that scene. And there's specifically a point where, because she has like, she's, she sees the future powers. And so she's like, oh, Gambit, watch out on your left. And he turns to his left and there's no one there. And then someone comes and punches him from the right. She's like, oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that right, makes it worth good. it. That's, that, good. that's good, right? Like, that's pretty good. So it kind of makes the whole thing worth it. <laughs> it's a good issue of X-Men. Just because of that, because of this five issue series, we get one scene where Gambit gets punched in the face. Yep, and that justifies it as <laughs> it's worth it. well, it's all well worth it. it. Well worth it. I would argue you don't need to read this to enjoy that moment. Oh no, you definitely don't. It does give you a little <laughs> bit of nice context for it. Like it gives you a little bit of an additional. Oh yes, thank God that guy got punched in the goddamn face. But see, it sounds like you have the every like a reader who had no idea who any of these characters were could read that and get almost the same amount of enjoyment that someone who knew all the references. That's called good writing. Yeah, Just I would agree. Have that... Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's my wild digression on a what you could read after this and b the current state of where Rogue and Gambit are at next time. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, we can go back to your regular scheduled non Marvel soap opera bullshit podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, like I said, what did I get us into, and what the hell happened? I, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Again, I thought it was fine. <laughs> I didn't think it was particularly bad nor particularly good. I also, you know, I do have to pride myself on on the fact that, um, you know. 
Every now and then, you guys got to have an episode where people are talking about a stinker. And man, we knocked it out of the park in this one. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, if if Susie hadn't beaten you to the punch. I was going to say two in a row. Two in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually telling Pat before we started recording, I was like, Tyler picked one comic that wasn't written by Jason Aaron, and he'll never pick a comic that wasn't <laughs> yep. written by Jason Aaron ever. I think he purposely threw it, though. I think he purposely threw it. Yeah, see, I, and that was the thing, you know. I didn't want to just go back to the same because I almost, almost picked <laughs> that Avengers run that that you uh, that you bought for me, Matt. Um, that Avengers run also very up and down from like a person who's been reading it on and off. Like when I come across issues, like there's stuff that's really good, and there's stuff that I just shake my head and I'm like, I don't. This isn't for me. <laughs> yeah, but that first, that first. Uh, like five issue trade or whatever is is pretty entertaining, yeah. In, in the grand scope of things, but even I followed it a little bit, and I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> like, what is yeah. going on? But I was like, you know, what? no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pick something completely random and different, and here we are. All right, should we move on to your question, Pat? I feel like we can take mine at the end because mine is very divorced from the series as a whole. <laughs> How dare you so... say divorce while we're talking about this? <laughs> It'll happen eventually, man. <laughs> well done. She kissed like Deadpool. It. So, I mean, I don't understand how he even forget. Again, that was the <laughs> other thing, too. Like, they did so many kisser. goofy things. So many goofy things and then tried to make it so serious at the end. And it was like, no, no. There, there was no tone in this comic. They were like, it's funny. It's sad. It's uh, supposed to be scary. And then it's... Uh, it never really does come around to being scary, which I think is part of your guys' complaint with like where's the like where's the stakes? Like I'm never I'm never fearful for anyone, even like less so than I am in a normal like superhero comic, right? Like yeah. And they could have easily made it scary. Like body horror stuff with all the golems could have happened. Taking people's memories away from them? That's one of my primary fears in life, my friends. Yeah, <laughs> like, like leaving all the mutants like Semi comatose in a mental health institute. That's freaky. Which they never go back to until the end. Like they just ignore that part. Yeah. Oh. That's, yeah. That's Pat, what is your question? Here we got to move on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My question, which is really just another nitpick. Uh, <laughs> how do you guys feel about accents that are written out phonetically? I'm. A trash person, and I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, Matt. <laughs> but like again, this is one where I feel like I'm gonna give you the the weird speech that I give, where I'm like, oh, I grew up reading. Like the Elkhorn Library had a bunch of volumes of Essential X Men, and Nightcrawler would say Mind Got all the time, and Colossus yeah. would say like Toverish or whatever he says. Like it's just it's part of what X Men comics are to me. Like I mean, it's not about- just an X Men thing, but. I mean, uh, even reading like a book, if it's like, I don't know, like Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones, the Northerners have a very strong accent and it's written phonetically and it drives me insane. I hate (laughs) having to sound out like really strong Scottish brogue. Just write what the character is saying. I don't want to have to like do homework to understand what is being said. It annoys me so much. I get what the author is trying to do. I get that they're trying to make it immersive. I don't like it. <laughs> and I, I would see... prefer them just say like in like brackets, like in heavy Southern. I don't just think like... you get the same feel though. Honestly, yeah. like I, I think like struggling it. to read, like there's a point where it becomes Dubliners, right? And you just have to throw the book across the room because you can't read it. Like I think a little bit for flavor. It's fine. I think it adds flavor. It's fine. They have to talk like that. You should have to read like that. <laughs> think no, of what they're yeah. going through. No. <laughs> That's their life. Pat. <laughs> their life. Pat. And you're just going to be like, your bubble has to be like my bubble. <laughs> That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> All right, Tyler. So you're okay with it as well? It's just me out here uh, saying, well, it's and too you, much. I think if it's done right, like obviously with Gambit. He's a Cajun, and it's not as bad. And part of it, too, like, I can see where you're coming from, because I, like I said, I think of the cartoon. So, like, in my brain, I don't care how they type it or how that's written out. I'm going to think 
of that voice. Yeah, you're, like just gonna, you read, you're just gonna hear it in cartoon yeah. voice. Like yeah. you're gonna anytime you read a Batman dialogue, anytime if you're not thinking uh, from the animated series, you're doing it wrong. You know what if I mean? Like do- if it doesn't sound like Kevin Conroy to you, yeah. it's probably not a line of dialogue Batman should be saying. Exactly. <laughs> Is my Affleck? Yeah. I mean, come on. Oh, get it, Pat. That's a separate podcast. You have to leave. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, like, like in my brain, I'm thinking that Gambit should be. Like, the way I'm reading it is like, yeah, no, that's how he would sound. So it makes sense to me. Rogue, I always thought was supposed to be more of like a Southern Belle kind of character yeah. from the cartoon. But in here, it doesn't read like that at all. Um, it does and it doesn't. She goes in and out. Yeah. But I so think, I think it's if heavier just... in the stuff in the past, actually, I was noticing. Where, like, I think some of the stuff that's in the flashbacks goes a bit heavier on it. And the stuff that's in the present doesn't. Yeah. I'd be interested to know if, like... There's a reason for that because I think she's still got with, her with accent. This comic, with this comic, no, there's I, no I, reason. I for there, well, no, I'm no, sure I there is. There I'm is. sure there's a reference that we're missing. That like, oh no, her accent was stronger before because she absorbed. Now she's been talking to Captain America a lot, so now yeah. her accent's way more white bread. <laughs> she's absorbed enough Yankees that she no yeah. longer has. <laughs> well, and that's like you're right because I just kind of was flipping through it here, and the first scene where they fight like uh the flashback where they meet and they're yeah fighting. the 90s stuff there's a lot more yeah. like um instead you of know. i'm <laughs> and she says sugar and stuff like that like where yep. i'm like yep that's straight out of the animated series that whereas gambit sense. just sounds the same in both of them for the most part i think <laughs> yeah well yeah he's a one note character let's be real here so um which we can okay we all have to agree right now that our head canon is that like Gambit doesn't actually know that much French. He just like throws words in because accent. he knows it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I, th- I think it's done well in this comic the way he talks. Like if you're, if you're worried about like weird accents and and bubbles from a comic standpoint, I think it works well for for Gambit in here. Just because I think it. If you didn't know him again, if you're going into this without ever re- reading an X Men comic. <laughs> or knowing who these two are, I think it's not over the top to the point where you're like, this guy's, you know, a crazy Cajun person who lives on a dock in a boat or whatever. <laughs> like he he talks like a gambler kind of stuff. So I I could see where it would get annoying if I read another five issues of this, but <laughs> for the five issues that we got, it's not too bad. I think it was an annoyance stacked upon many other annoyances. I think that was just the straw that broke the camel. Yeah. You were like, wow, everything about this is terrible. And you know what? <laughs> this I'm, and I'm done. I can't even read this. No, I mean, that's partially true, but I think Matt, you and I talked about this before we started recording that while these word bubbles got a lot of words in them. All right. That was your addendum question, right? It was like, are these pages way too full of dialogue? And I wouldn't like, I would say the answer is yes, you are correct. <laughs> like in the beginning, it's fine. But towards the end, it's like multiple paragraphs in one like bubble that has like a little bubble towards the, if you need to make an addendum bubble, that's too many words in one bubble. You got to like, <laughs> it just, I'm going to be honest towards the end. I stopped reading some of the bubbles. Like I know what's going on. I get the gist. I don't need to read exactly what kind of Ted on Ted like yeah. back and forth they're having. I gotcha. Especially in the, in the in the fight scenes where it was really busy anyways. Yeah. Because now you're wondering like which rogue is talking, which gambit yeah, is talking. Yeah, the problem with the fight scenes is you do like because they there's as much as they're in different costumes, like most of them just look like rogue and gambit. <laughs> like so you do kind of lose track every once in a while of which you're ones tell- are the ones that <laughs> you're telling me a good guy about. who wears a trench coat uh is fighting another dude in a trench coat but we don't know which trench can't coat tell is who is who coat. there are literally versions of the gambit costume in here that are just like the purple on his chest is a slightly different pattern different sh- yeah, that yeah. that's that's the change and i'm gonna tell those people apart and like i just again i have i just pulled up one of the pages it's one two three four panels of them fighting and while they're fighting they're also talking about the problem like this is dialogue that they should have had when they were taking a breather from fighting or hiding or something along those lines where it's like oh man our memories are going away and we're we're losing our powers instead they're doing it while kicking each other in the face 
and and throwing cards and body slamming each other and it it just takes away from everything yeah if there was if there was a problem with the speech bubbles i don't think it was the spelled out accents i think it was the excess amount of them yeah i'm just flipping through the panels and like even when there's like there's a panel here at the end near the end where gambit's talking to all the the like drained mutants at the hospital and he's got four speech bubbles which like wouldn't be that big a deal but like each one of them is a paragraph and there's a the a page where they're like walking along the beach near the end of issue one two and again just like every single bubble is just like a paragraph (laughs) (laughs) it's a lot you have visual medium to convey a story as well as the words i wish you would use both and you know who needed the most bubbles and didn't get them was was lavish when lavish. <laughs> she yeah. gets her powers, and like when when Rogue absorbs her memories, there's no explanation as to what's going on here. Like, why is she suddenly making golems and absorbing powers in the middle of snowy? I'm guessing New York. Uh, like, there's no words there, but we're gonna use them for everybody else, as many as we can. Yeah, I feel like four bubbles in a panel is actually like you should only be able to get away with that so many times. And I'm just flipping through pages and I'm like, every single page for the most part has at least one panel where it's just at like four, four or more bubbles. And so many of them are just like huge bubbles also. Like it's not like a sentence. It's like, well, some of them are a sentence, but they really been long sentences. Well, even they, too, if you're going to go back to the last page, right, about the cats. Did we really need four panels talking about cats? And Again, then... I got I have to think that that's something with like they were gonna try to set up <laughs> yeah, I'll know. put that in the show notes. What the why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's like you should put like the whole page there, because it's not just that it's oh god, it's too much. Yeah. So I was telling you, Pat, before we started recording too, that like there's um I don't know if you guys would have read anything by Brian Michael Bendis or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's like, like, it's a that novel. That is now. Yeah. Like, but like, there are so many Brian Michael Bendis pages, which are just like, they have beautiful art on them because he gets to work with so many great artists. And then they're just full of text balloons. Like, they're just, they're more, no, they're about the same covered up as the page you just posted in Discord, Pat. And it's like, this at least, like, for the most part, like, there are too many balloons, but you can at least argue that, like, they work with the art. Like, they don't... Uh, like, I don't, I don't know if I want... Like, I, I, yeah, I'm comfortable saying that. They work with the art. Like, they do, like... They lead the eye and stuff for the most part. There are so many, like, Brian Michael Bendis pages where they're just, like... There's so many balloons. It's just, like, on a montage page that you just want to look at. Yeah. Anyways. Those are the exact pages where it's really egregious. Those are... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Gambit one, like... I'm looking at it, and I'm just, just like, funny. I can't help but edit it in my head, like, with my writer brain to be like, okay, I make that first one, like, ten words, the second one, like, seven words, and then, like, maybe even cut one of those. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's like, it's Monday morning quarterbacking, and I don't like to do that, because, <laughs> sure. again, getting anything, like, written and published is hard, <laughs> so I don't love to... Are you sure? You read this, right? I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> I mean, when you publish your Marvel comic book, Tyler. We're doing an episode on it, know? let me tell you. <laughs> I would I would gladly. <laughs> no, I'm gonna make somebody else do it. Like I'm I'm not gonna be the guest host on that one. Somebody else can be. So I don't like I don't wanna go too hard, because again, like I don't think any of it would like tipped the comic into being unreadable in a way that like Pat, you remember in Sandman Endless Nights, I was re- trying to read those, I think it was the Delirium story, and I was like, I literally just can't read this on a tablet. Like, I just can't read it. Sure, but that's like, this is art, and that's like bolded. Yeah, it's like an opposite problem, right? Where this one's like very straightforward. It's, des- and it's designed comics. to be disorienting. Yeah. For yeah, yeah. This is supposed to convey a story, and <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. I again, I agree. I'm just gonna keep. I also like how we're just gonna keep posting. 
Okay, yeah, literally just... that those the, those bubbles are too small for me, me to be able to read them in Discord. So you might have done it wrong, right? <laughs> like the other ones you've posted so far in Discord, I can at least like read them without squinting. But the this one, which is the page where Rogue is sitting on a dock in her swimsuit and Gambit's in the water in his underoos. I can't read what Rogue is saying from the picture you posted in Discord because the bubbles are too they're too big with too small of words in them. And you know what the best part about that one? That page has one, two, three, four other panels they could have put words in. Instead they have them diving in. But they have water. an entire two page spread and then we get the like Yeah. What is this nonsense like four oh god. Yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely sure the problem is with how they spelled stuff out here. It's just how much they use. I'm just saying, it was a strain to begin with, and then what I'm reading doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to stop dunking on the comic now. So that was we're my question. Sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Get on the comic. Oh, to no. a related but not actually about the comic question. But you know, when we were talking before, I was like, I should bring a question about the comic that maybe like lets us talk about the like the good points of the comic. But we touched on some of them. What there was, it's fine. My question is, who is your favorite ex couple? Because this comic claims that Rogue and Gambit are everybody's favorite ex couple. It says it on the back cover here. Everybody's favorite ex couple is reunited. I think that's false. <laughs> I think Rogue and Gambit are not my favorite ex couple and would not. Well, I'm trying to think. They might crack into the list, if only because I like Rogue, but I really don't like Gambit, as has been previously stated. Well, this is where, uh, like Pat said earlier, fake fan, if anything, or ignorance. <laughs> Join I us. Know, I don't know <laughs> enough ex-couples to... I mean, okay, so Rogue and Gambit is the one. You uh-huh. obviously got Scott and Jean. Uh-huh. You also got Logan and Jean. Mm-hmm. And one more, one got, more. Uh, is there one more with Gene, or is there one more? No, 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 no. Scott. So you gotta yeah. finish out that triangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, like, like I, I don't know, like enough to, to make an argument either way. Um, well, there's Professor X and Cerebro. That's another one. <laughs> the computer. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> but I could see it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh. So I, mean, I guess if you, if you don't have an answer, that's fine too. I just don't have enough knowledge to where I could be like, yeah, like I didn't know Colossus. I thought Colossus was gay. I didn't know him and Katie were a thing, <laughs> or Kitty were a thing. Like, uh, uh, I, I did not know that. Hang on, vamp a little bit. I gotta Google something quick. Um, I mean, I feel like I didn't know enough about Mystique and Destiny. I'd like to say they're my favorite, but I haven't seen enough of them to really say i've, I've seen, seen i follow some page on facebook called like out of context comics panels and uh <laughs> sure. there was one where it was those two and i don't know like the world was ending or something like that and i and it was like a really like nice touching moment between the two of them and i was like oh that's nice i didn't know they were a couple i didn't know who destiny was before this comic panel either so like uh <laughs> Uh, like of, House of X and Powers of X is the only Mystique and Destiny stuff that I've gotten. But yeah, I, I mean it. that's some good Mystique and Destiny stuff, though, Pat. I appreciate <laughs> it's not a bad that. place to start. <laughs> Where yeah. Destiny basically tells Mystique, "Hey, there's going to be this like mutant paradise island, and it's going to seem good. But if they won't resurrect me, something shitty's going on, and you got to burn that place to the fucking <laughs> ground." <laughs> that's, that's a good that. premise to a story. Why it's we pretty go good. That way? Hey, Rogue Gambit, you got to go to a couple's retreat. <laughs> right. or, or, or else what? Uh, I don't know. So can I tell you, like, basically what ends up happening... God, I'm just, just going to be explaining X-Men lore to you guys, which I guess is what the X-Men podcasts are, because that's <laughs> what X-Men is. So right. basically what ends up happening is Mystique impersonates Xavier to, like, get the like memories and genetic material needed to resurrect destiny from Mr. Sinister, who knows it's mystique anyways. <laughs> it's just sure. like, sure, have it. I know who you are. I know what you're doing. This will be fun. And then like Mr. Sinister. Yeah. She goes to the mutants that like can this, like m- the set of mutants that can resurrect other mutants tricks them into resurrecting destiny. And like, basically the way that they reveal to Charles and Magneto who have been trying to stop this from happening for reasons is 
Mystique's like, I have a nomination for the quiet, for the like the ruling council of Krakoa. It's my wife who you wouldn't let me resurrect. And <laughs> Destiny just walks in, and they're all like, "Fuck, we already oh. lost." <laughs> yeah, man, it's over. Yeah. That's good X Men comics. <laughs> that is good X Men comics. You know. <laughs> Anyways, my favorite X couple is um, Cyclops and Emma Frost. Oh, I was gonna say if you fucking said Jean Grey. Goddamn. No, no, no. Cyclops and Emma are like so much more interesting. Because it's so wrong. It's, yeah, it's, it's right. Like that's kind of the thing, right? Like they don't really make any sense, but that's part of why they make sense. Because like they both see like some qualities of the other one that they relate to, and they're like trying to work on the stuff that they're like, I don't really think you should be doing that. <laughs> so that's, that's Scott and Emma Frost when Emma Frost is mind fucking him as Jean Grey in her costume in his mind, right? That's you know, the... is like legitimately one of my like you one of the comics I read fiction. when I was in eighth grade. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> I read I read that comic. I bought that comic at a gas station during our road trip to Washington, D.C., it was, they just randomly had a single issue of New X-Men by nice. Grant Morrison, and it's the issue that ends with Gene coming in to, like, <laughs> yes. Scott and Emma's psychic affair and be like, what you doing, bro? What the fuck? And I'm just like, reading that on my Catholic school road trip. I'm just like, oh, um, gonna Just gonna close, close this, this real quick. I'll read yeah. this later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I guess I mean, I to go off of... To go after the Grant Morrison thing, I think my actual favorite is probably Beak and Angel. I like them. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to go with um, uh, Beast and Science. So I'm just going to go. With, uh, <laughs> oh, Tyler, that's so good, Jones. actually. Beast, evil, Beast is evil now, so. Oh, is science, it really? Science done fucked him up good. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're still together. That's the important thing. They are yeah, still they're together. Thick and thin. They're thick and thin. Beast and Science. <laughs> It's better than my other answers, which were going to be, you know, Blob and Food, uh, <laughs> nice. Sabretooth and Wolverine. Um, that I like that answer, actually. Sabretooth and Wolverine. Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got. I, I don't know enough of them. I was going to say Ro- Rogue and Gambit, but... Um, that's Not anymore. Not point. anymore. Yeah, the so comic has ruined that for done. you. You know what? I, I'll, I'll say this. How about... Uh, 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 Storm and uh, Black Panther. Yeah. It's not two X Men, but uh, let's face it, uh, that's a pretty cool power couple there. Can I tell you? This is not actually my favorite moment in their relationship. I'm thinking about other comics now, and they have they have actual like nice like I don't know if wholesome is the right word, but like good romantic like relationship moments. But the shitty guy in me wants to say my favorite moment of that relationship is in Avengers vs. X-Men when Black Panther tells Storm that the high priest of the Panther God annulled their marriage. And Storm's like, you're the high priest of the Panther God. He's like, (laughs) yup. You got it. (laughs) Sure did annul our marriage. (laughs) Yeah. I forgot Bobby Drake has a boyfriend now. Who's Emma yeah. Frost's brother? What? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> Interesting one, too. See, I could have done an Emma Frost one, because I have an Emma Frost statue that's really cool. I'll just send it. Emma a Frost is awesome. So. Yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not a big X-Men mark, but, like, I got some pretty cool X-Men collectible shit uh, over the past couple of years. I'll just send some pictures so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. But no, I had to see a Gambit action figure <laughs> first before I went to the <laughs> other room, and, uh... Here we are. Nothing nothing good can come of trying to read stuff that has Gambit in it. That's what I say. <laughs> hey, I try. I get. I, I, I can take the blame, but we all know who's at fault here. I mean, I'm also having an aggressively extreme opinion because we're doing a podcast. I don't I don't think that's actually true. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to pick other ones, but I'm pretty sure Pat was the one who uh, settled on Gambit, right? I I'm said, pretty uh, sure I gave you two options. I said I did. I think Moon Knight was another option. <laughs> yeah, but I was gonna do the Moon Knight run uh, that I, I think uh, that Garth wrote, and I didn't think you were a fan of that one, so I kind of sat out on that one. 
Oh, the Warren Ellis one? Oh, yeah. uh, Warren Ellis, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing where, like, I think we'll yeah. end up reading some Warren Ellis stuff for the podcast eventually, regardless. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not like, a huge deal, but, like, like every uh, time we read a Warren Ellis book, I'm going to have to preface it with, this guy's a creep. <laughs> All right, boys, I think we've moved on to the recommendations part oh, of the yeah. podcast. <laughs> Tyler, what are your recommendations for people who read this book and either enjoyed it or just want something that is similar and maybe better? I don't well, know. <laughs> well, my my rec- yeah, my recommendations uh, this this go around are a little different. They're not comics. Oh, um, I have one recommendation that is a book, an actual paperback book. It was a hardcover yeah, yeah. at one time, I'm sure. Uh. I just started reading it, so I, I'm not done with it. So I don't know how great it is, um, but so far so good. It is ready for this. Stan Lee, the man behind Marvel, by Bob Batchelor. Oh, all right, uh, all right. Check that thing out. Uh, so far so good. Uh, basically an autobiography of Stan Lee. And then my uh, second recommendation is everyone should go get their phones and download Marvel Snap <laughs> and dedicate their life. To a silly card game on their phone. It is wildly addicting uh, and gives a lot of cool shout outs to lesser known Marvel characters. It's I've true. been having a blast with it. Um, probably too much of a blast. I haven't spent, okay, I spent 10 bucks on it, but like you don't have to spend <laughs> money. What's your collection okay. rating right now? Hold on, let me pull it up. Roughly. It is <laughs> too high. It is too high. I can tell you that. It is. I'm going to judge you based on where I am to where you are. So I know. Right, okay. Well, yeah. Player versus player is coming uh, by the time. I know. This, I'm so excited. Is, yeah. By the time this is released, it'll it'll be out. So I am at 1,508. Yep. No life debt. No. Nope. Yep. <laughs> I'm at like 500. Yeah. <laughs> I've put in a decent amount of time. Yeah. I am. Um, I play it nightly. It's a, it's a good game. Um. I also bought the Black Panther pass. I don't know if that made it easier. Oh, sure. To up, but like, um, I really wanted that Black Panther card. So yeah, uh, I mean that's reasonable. Ten dollars yeah. is not very much in the grand scheme of things. No, <laughs> Matt. The no. next one was Silver Surfer, so they really tempted me. <laughs> yeah, and the Silver Surfer card was good. Like, yeah, it was, it was like the three just, drop one. It was, yeah, um, it's a good game. Uh, if you need your superhero game fix, because uh, I don't know. I've heard mixed reviews about Midnight Suns and stuff. Uh, that, That's pretty good. One, That's very high on Midnight Suns. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, I haven't played Sonic Frontiers yet. That's on my list of games to play. But Marvel Snap and Stan Lee, the man behind Marvel, those are my recommendations because God knows I shouldn't be recommending comics after picking this. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations? I don't. I tried to like scrape the bottom of the barrel. No, just that's now. fine. Just you know what? You jump on the video game bandwagon because I know you tried to get me to play Marvel Snap. And you know what? It lasted longer than most mobile games do on my phone. It, I did. It, I tried to get you, but I think you would it, like I think you would like Midnight Suns much more because it's got the deck building aspect to it. Yeah. The story's meh. <laughs> And yeah, but with all of those to... games, the story's kind of meh, right? Like, you're not playing it for the story for the most part. And you gotta just take everything with a grain of salt. These are not the characters as you know them from the comic books. Blade has a book club, and he's trying to get with Captain Marvel. It's just a thing, okay? You gotta I mean, that could easily that. show up in that could easily show up in Marvel comics. I think you guys have, are underrating the like the fan fiction quality of some Marvel okay. comics. Oh, fair, fair oh, enough. Yeah. Yeah. Is what I've taken away from this podcast. I mean, it's pretty fun, and if you like, if you like the idea of hanging out with with uh, I don't know Wolverine and magic in a hot tub, it's there. It's waiting for you. Is that that might be my new favorite ex couple. I don't know. <laughs> Mag- magic and a hot tub, because yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> just yeah. In limbo. I have comics to recommend. I was gonna I, say I, I will be, I the, I be the poor soul. <laughs> I am to hear what you recommend uh, uh, past this. I I want to know because. I don't always go get the recommendations after we get done recording, but goddamn, if I'm not about to after this one. So the first one I've got is like a similarly like rom-commy fun superhero 
like date story. There are two issues of Tom King's Batman run, which are, the overall run is like up and down, but this is like one of the high points of it for me. It's a double date between Batman and Catwoman and Superman and Lois. Oh, is that the one with the cute like elevator sequence? Yeah, so the first part of it is them like they end up um going to like stop the same crime, I think, or something. Like that's the first issue. But the much more fun issue is the second part where they go to like a county fair and like it's superhero night at the county fair. And in order to get in, they basically just like they all swap costumes and then Catwoman's just like, just let me in. <laughs> because she's just dressed as Lois. <laughs> so, like Lois is dressed as Catwoman, Clark's dressed as Batman. With glasses on, hilarious, and <laughs> and uh, Bruce is dressed as Superman, and um, Selena's just like dressed as Lois, and is just like, just let me in. I'm I'm Selena. <laughs> I'm hot. Let me in. I'm hot. Let me in. And they like do various things at the county fair, and like basically the guys are talking about relationships, and the girls are talking about relationships because this is still, I think, after Batman has proposed to Catwoman, but they haven't not gotten married yet, essentially. It's just fun. Like, it, it's pretty fun. Like, they go through the tunnel of love, and Lois and Clark just kind of, like, sit there and have, like, a, like, aw shucks, Midwestern date, and, like, Batwoman and Catwoman come out of the tunnel of love, and Catwoman's just, like, on top of Batman making out with him. Because, <laughs> like, nice. yeah, it's it's a fun that's, one. The art is probably, a little bit overly sexualized in that one, I will say, but it's, it's a fun time. probably what this comic should have been, honestly. Like, if they were going to lean one way or the other, they probably should have leaned more into the, uh, rom-com aspect of it but yeah yeah pat just posted a panel from that the first part of it in there and just like it's just it's just fun it's like cute. The, that bit at the end there where like lois and catwoman are just kind of looking at each other she's like oh hey i'm lost lane you must be catwoman heard a lot about you because <laughs> bruce didn't introduce him yeah yeah oh god it's got that moment to those same panels where clark's like if I had flown in, I would have had to break a window. Break a window. I'm not a <laughs> yeah, monster. Okay, this, I'm yeah. Superman. Yeah, that is funny. Oh, so good. Batman just stares at him a little bit. Uh, and if you want an X-Men related recommendation that is, I think, like, similar to the fun, like, kind of, like, knows what it is, tongue-in-cheek tone of this that you get once in a while, like the, hey, we're sending this couple to couples therapy, ha ha ha. Um, there's a current miniseries going right now called Exterminators, which is basically like four ex-women trapped in a grindhouse movie, but like it's vampires and aliens <laughs> that they're like fighting against. Um, and it's pretty fun. It's way over the top. It's like almost a mature reader's title. So like, oh. know that going in, but like they talk about Dazzler's ass a lot in that one. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's got, like, some costumes, and, like, not, like, superhero costumes. <laughs> um, oh. The thing. Fun uh, one, though. It's a romp. <laughs> I, like I said, I'll be damned if I don't go buy one of these. <laughs> I would say, honestly, Tyler, if you're going to buy one or the other, well, A, Ex- Exterminators hasn't finished yet, but, like, that Batman thing's, like, it's two issues, and you can... Like, it's pretty self-contained. Like, if you know who these people are, you're probably fine. It's not like, it doesn't have flashbacks to when Catwoman and Batman first met. Like, that sort of thing. Like, it's just, it's just kind of fun. I can get behind that. I can get behind that for sure. Yeah, I think that will do it for this month's discussion of Rogue and Gambit, Ring of Fire. As always, if you want to get in touch with Pat or myself, you can email us at waitingonthetrade at gmail.com. And you can find more comics-related goodness at mattreadscomics.com. Tyler, are you still at the point in your life where you want to be found on the internet? This is the way I phrase this question <laughs> to people now. <laughs> I feel like I've like entered the like post You know there's days. <laughs> social media era a little bit here on the podcast. There's days. If anyone's interested, I stream very part time stuff on Twitch at truekingt.tv or whatever it is. Twitch.tv slash true king t. That's what it is. It is. Uh, I uh, I do that every now and then. Go there, and you can find me on the other socials from there. I'll tell you what they are <laughs> at that point. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much where you can find me on the internet. Nice. Well, despite the fact that it seems like we thought this comic was 
middling to not good. I had a lot of fun talking about it. So thank you for bringing it, and thank you for coming back on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'll do better <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no requirement to do better. You bring whatever you want. I just, I just uh, uh, regarding this comic and regarding this podcast, it just dawned on me that at the very top, above on, on the first cover, it is quoted from IGN saying, now this is something special. Oh, if that doesn't ring true after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing does. 